we think we are live uh, hello everyone uh, good evening and uh, greetings from jindal global law school uh, welcome to the uh, first episode of the second season of the young scholars colloquium uh, for the past one year uh, over 12 discussions of this sort would uh, took place and uh, professor anil prakash mishra the director of law admissions and associate dean uh, of the jindal global law school he made sure that the webinar series of uh, discussions with the alumni and the students of jindal global law school took place and uh, every topic that was discussed in the series was useful to all the law aspirants current students and also those who have passed out so today we have uh, four guests with us uh, three alumni and one current student um, we'll be having a discussion and we'll be sharing the experiences of everyone of their law school life and their work experience so first of all we have pitambar yadav with us he's he's an india qualified lawyer he is also an uh, accredited mediator and also a fellow of the chartered institute of uh, arbitrators then we have yashas he is a student of uh, of the fourth year in the uh, five year llb program he is joining us from uh, from germany ebc law school i believe ebs law school because he is a, a semester exchange student there uh, then we have prerna with us prerna is a sports lawyer Uh, she is joining us from bangalore uh, working with uh, fox and mandel associates bangalore and then finally we have archana with us she is a she is an advocate at the supreme court of india professor mishra is also with us he'll be joining us in a couple of minutes so uh, i believe let's start let's start with the senior most let's start with pitambar pitambar i welcome you to the program and uh, please share your experience of the law school share your experience of uh, of working as a as a as a mediator as a, as a member as a fellow of the ciarb stay thank you on. thank you so much aditya and uh, first of all i would like to thank uh, uh, everybody uh, on the panel and uh, to be here and to have this uh, opportunity to talk about the transition that takes place after the law school and uh, i think uh, you know that that discussion can very well uh, give an insight to yashas as well who is almost on the verge of completing the law school so uh, my experience uh, i think uh, I, i was very grateful first of all for all the opportunities that i got at jgu and uh, for that fact uh, you know uh, i got uh, you know a insight into a lot of different industries uh, legal industries a lot, lot of different sections uh, be it uh, maybe ip uh, you know you can say it ipr uh, got into dispute resolution and then also got to learn about facets of tax law through different opportunities at jgu and uh, i think it was in my final year uh, when i started doing uh, started focusing on mediation and uh, dispute resolution per se so for that fact uh, you know the opportunities that i got in my final year it really helped uh, you know propelled me towards uh, dispute resolution in the long run and uh, that's how uh, i got the base set so you know a lot of people ask as to what what are so what sort of opportunities we should look out for in law school uh, see there's not going to be a straight jacket formula for that uh, but you need to understand that uh, if you are still uh, you know deciding on as to which field of law really interests you or which uh, you know which direction you suppose you want to head uh, after graduation then i would really recommend them uh, going through different activities at law school mm-hmm. testing them out and understanding which one suits them the best because there is not going to be a straight answer right maybe sometimes it happens with us that you know we might like tax law but in the next semester we have ipr so we really get fascinated by ipr not in in a different ball game altogether and then maybe sometime later we have a different elective that really you know uh, gets us going so it can never be uh, you know a conclusive answer unless and until you have experienced everything so for me that worked out really well because uh i was able to shortlist after understanding and you know uh getting an insight into different various different fields within the uh within the law school itself and uh, that's how i was able to do it so if anyone who's listening or anyone who's watching this webinar really wants to understand as to you know or is not is no is confused or maybe not decided yet as to what they want to do after law school then it's completely fine take your time and uh, test out different opportunities and find out what works the best for you and that's the i think the simplest and the easiest way to go to go with that and uh, post law school uh, i ended up uh, you know focusing on a lot of different things but uh, what i picked up in my final year of law school i decided to continue with that in the long run 
and uh, thereafter nus was always on my mind uh, post law school because that's something that i really wanted to pursue because of the degree structure that they have and plus the llm that focuses completely on dispute resolution framework international dispute resolution framework we learned about arbitration mediation and a host of different things that goes about uh, cases in international law or the international legal framework as i said so that really helped me and uh, that really helped me create a strong base because you know without the basics if you feel like uh, entering into any field it's going to get difficult so you know you need to have that thorough grounding in a particular subject or a particular field of law uh, where you feel confident where you feel that okay yeah, this is the field of law for me and this is path that i want to take going forward so once you have the grounding once you have the basic site once you have an idea of what needs to be done uh in the long run i think that makes things very easy and uh, post that post nus i worked there for a bit uh, you know was researching on uh, facets related to international mediation framework and uh, thereafter i've been uh, based out of gurgaon in india and uh, i've been working here uh, because uh you know at the very basic level at the very minute details you know all these cases that even though you may eventually turn into arbitrations or uh, mediations they have uh, you know civil origins right they have to origin somewhere right so it it might be a civil suit it might be a petition or it might be a contractual dispute so everything goes through that framework within the judicial uh, uh, system that we have so even though you know you can say that you have a hang of arbitration you have a hang of mediation but it becomes equally important uh, to understand how uh, have we reached that stage of arbitration do we know what has culminated into us getting into maybe let's say opting for mediation or opting for uh, arbitration through the dispute resolution clause and i think this was the you know crux of my talk uh, uh, at jju as well uh, when i met yashas and everybody because that whole timeline matters so much uh, in a dispute and uh, it's a whole different discussion altogether but uh, yeah so my advice would be again simple very straightforward uh, nothing to do uh, you know with the uh, particular uh, you know not any specific advice but just to understand what makes you feel at home while you are working right and uh, that that process will gra- gradually catch up with you post graduation so don't worry don't uh, you know i just my advice basic advice to all the graduation students who are about to graduate maybe in the pen- penalty mate year or their final year is that uh, just uh, g- just relax and uh, you will figure it out maybe if not uh, in the fourth year in the fifth year maybe if not after that in the f- one year after graduation so just relax and uh, plan it through think it through and uh, that's how you want to do it so i hope i am audible and visible adit yes sir you are audible loud in here so uh, very good evening everyone and thank you so much for joining from different parts of the country i am in kolkata today i just landed uh, at the airport and uh, on the way to the hotel and somehow uh, my flight got delayed and uh, i got delayed for our most important event of the day the young scholars colloquium Uh, why we do this because i strongly believe every alumni and every student at the law school is a young scholar whatever you do you pursue a scholarship whether in court room like archana whether in law firm like prerna whether in a germany uh, law school classroom like yashash or whether it's like a mediation or arbitration or whatever you do pitambar it's a pursuit of a scholarship pursuit of justice pursuit of uh in a way bringing law and order and establishing rule of law in the society so uh young scholars colloquium is a very very important forum uh for us and i will i will just tell one thing before i invite the next speaker yashash who had joined us from germany uh that my memory of pitambar is when he came for admission he was rank 1 in punjab university chandigarh entrance exam so his name was in the newspapers and uh, he was all set to go to punjab university chandigarh as the f- first rank candidate in the state and all that and i remember meeting his father a great gentleman and uh, also very passionate about education uh, and somehow we were able to convince him that uh, 
putting him in, at Jindal Global Law School and not at Punjab University Chandigarh is a better idea. And I'm very happy that Pitambar uh, went to NUS Singapore and uh, I mean, he, he is establishing himself in a, his own way. The second thing I will say, because I have reached my hotel, I have to leave the car, uh, is Archana and Pitambar are twin brother sister. Both studied in two different programs. Archana joined three year LLB. And after completing a B honors degree from Punjab University, Chandigarh, and I'm so happy that both of you have been able to join uh, this colloquium. The first one in our second season, we did 12 uh, colloquiums in past and they were all very well received. So congratulations and uh, I'll be joining shortly, but over to you, Yashash, please uh, uh, go ahead. And thank you, Aditya, for anchoring this, for starting this. Over to you, Yashash. Uh, thank you so much, Professor. Thank you, Aditya, and everybody else as well. Uh, I, I met Pitambar like a couple of months ago when we hosted him as our guest speaker. So it's great to meet him again today as well. Uh, there are probably like seven things I'd like to cover. One is what core courses in Jindal looks like and what it has been in Germany, core courses with electives. Second is uh, competitions and university delegations that we send out. Uh, third is clinical programs and research. Fourth is societies and events. And a couple of things are just interlinked with the larger idea of what it meant for me to study at Jindal. So the one thing that we thought would strike us very differently when we came to Germany for SEM exchange was probably the culture of studying was probably how different people, different legal cultures actually deal with different subjects. But honestly, it's not been that much of a difference because most professors at Jindal either taught like this or incorporated a lot of teaching methodologies like the way we do in Germany. Plus, one thing that stood out for us is how Jindal was also very application practical based in terms of how they taught us. So every class in Germany is about that particular case, that particular hypothetical that you come up with, as opposed to a lot of like theory or like codifications that you learn. So what we saw here is the emphasis on practical application that both Germany and uh, uh, Jindal had back here. So EBS course also offers something similar to our claim and lead course. So back home, when we have external practitioners coming in and teaching us for that weekend. You have something similar here as well, where they get law firm partners or other uh, faculty members from across Germany to teach you. So this concept of getting these people to teach you, I think has been absolutely incredible. So when I was back home, we used to like, uh, I attended a lecture from uh, Gopal Subramanian, sir, for instance, last, last year, which is fantastic. And we had some, we had one by Sanjay Natani sir this year as well. So all of these are like very distinct courses tailor-made to give you very insightful understanding of how both the legal industry is working, how specific sectors are working. So I think this is the sort of edge that Jindal students get by real-time practitioners that others don't. And the third is just in terms of assessments. So the similarity structured both at Jindal and here in terms of hypothetical construction, in terms of understanding your drafting capabilities and all of that, I as a law student found both these aspects to be very uh, intuitive and like feedback based. So back at Jindal as well, when we used to get feedback on every drafting test that we did or every assessment that we did, it sort of helped me make sense of my internships of what is expected of me during my internships. So while I did learn a lot from my internships, I think the primary push right from your first day, wherein you learn about SCC Manupatra in like a four hour long session by the Jeju library itself is a very good start to both research and drafting assessments that you get both in law school and outside in your internships. And something which, which I have been very focused is dispute resolution. And as somebody who wants to follow the footsteps of Pitambar and probably figure it out in the way he has done, and which is very close to my heart is both negotiation and mediation. So one thing which is quite distinct, probably Prerna and I have experiences the most is doing law school during a COVID time. And at this point, I think a lot of things changed for us just in terms of the amount of exposure Jindal gave us. So I think when like, uh, so when COVID hit, we are, I was in my second year and we had a lot of opportunity happening across the world because everything was virtual, which is why we were able to do, let's say 15 dispute resolution competitions versus let's say the five. It means meeting 20 more uh, like people from 20 different other countries as opposed to going for that one competition. So in a way, the pandemic sort of pushed us to meet a lot many more people, network with multiple different people and engage in various activities. 
And I think Jindal, while stepping up during the pandemic, gave us these opportunities like no other law school, at least in India. Uh, and the second thing is the active effort that you can put in. So uh, like, let's say you have a student leadership position in Jindal, right? There are multiple student-run societies in Jindal. And if you do have a leadership position within these societies, there are multiple initiatives, multiple things that you can do in Jindal with absolute support of the university. So one thing that I have never faced is a backlash or resistance from the administration for any activity that you wanted to do. So be it the ADR society, be it the debate society, be it the human rights society, any society or initiative that you take. Like for instance, we, the workshop series that I spoke about earlier, Pitambar was there. All of that was created on the go wherein we wanted people, external people to come train us, like train JGLS students, send them for competitions, so on and so forth. So I think the emphasis on student-run initiatives and the independence that you get to actually enforce them and actually tailor make them for the needs of the university are absolutely amazing. So there's extensive student autonomy, there's continuous ability for students to refine institutional processes. So you're not always reliant on the administration to refine institutional processes. The burden is also on students to identify and refine them, which I think is fantastic. So you start identifying how university works, what is the process that is being followed, so I think all of this has greatly like helped us uh, both in terms of time management, has helped us identify processes, has helped us be much more professional. So when you're dealing with an administration, you get to be more professional. So I think all of this has helped us a lot. Uh, so the last thing I just want to like quickly stress upon is just uh, clinical programs and research. So we when I joined the Legal Aid Clinic when the pandemic hit, so there was no opportunity for us to actually go to places and let's say, provide legal aid in the manner that we could. So we started drafting bail applications. We had an entire semester of course, wherein we were taught how to draft bail applications, how we had advocates from the Delhi High Court coming in, telling us, giving us samples, giving us examples. And all of this during a virtual setting was uh, like very important to us because we were completely isolated from what was happening for all practical purposes. So being in your second year or third year of law school, and not knowing what to do and every, when everything is online, I think specific opportunities like this, which allowed you to skill and tool yourself and be ready when the pandemic became much lesser and when we are like out for our internships or our exchanges now, it, made, it makes a lot more sense to have had done it back then. And uh, so in, in terms of opportunities, I think like all four of us can probably agree that Jindal has, is just like a place which is, which you will always be spoiled for choice, which I think is fantastic. At any point of time, if you want to switch to forensic sciences, if you want to switch to just learning about Hindustani music or art, you can do it comfortably while doing law as well. And I think this choice that you have throughout law school while interacting with other uh, schools at JGU or with other professors, faculty members is absolutely fantastic. And I think this very holistic idea that you can be at the best place, best event, best uh, play, like, Anything best at in every field is something that I think uh, all of us should be very lucky for. And I personally have been uh, very lucky in terms of accessing most of these opportunities and wanting to do more in like what is left of my law school as well. Uh, so that's about it from my end. Thank you so much. Uh, that's so amazing. I'm. So delighted to hear you. You are still a student, and I mean, uh, almost two years to go, right? So one and a half years, professor. One and a half years. I know. Uh, COVID has, uh, in a way, uh, impacted us very badly. A lot of students missed uh, huge opportunities to be on campus to learn to. Uh, in a way shape their lives. But now we are back to normalcy and uh, I'm very happy that students who are there on campus Viswa Mill. Viswa Mill starts today. It's a very special occasion. I don't know whether you people are aware, but uh, a large number of students and uh, you know, you can understand the activities so yesterday midnight at 3 a.m. from my apartment, I could see all uh, those, you know, lights all over the campus and revolving around the campus. I could not understand what is happening. And in the morning, I came to know it was Biswamil preparation. So 
Uh, I'm extremely delighted to be with all of you. I'm sure you will miss Biswamil in Germany, but uh, next year you will be attending it. And now I'd like to invite Prerna, uh, uh, working in Fox Bundle, one of the oldest and leading law firms of the country. And uh, I also remember a bit about you, your joining. If I remember correctly, you, you this uh, Anand Sweets was the brand of Bangalore, which prepares very good Anand Pedas. And that is uh, Prerna Dadu's family business. But she chose to study law. And I'm so happy, so proud of you that from business, you actually, in a way, move to uh, becoming a learned professional to choose the path uh, to uh, defend others. And uh, I mean, uh, of course, contribute to the rule of law uh, society, what we aim to build in our country and around the world. So over to you. And uh, Prerna has also, I, I was looking at your experiences. You all have interned with multiple organizations, multiple institutions, worked at various places. And I'm so happy now uh, as alumni, you have something to share with the younger students uh, of the law school. And uh, this is a, a very happy occasion for me because after 12 episodes of the first uh, JGLS Scholars Colloquium, I almost uh, I decided to stop it. But two individuals inspired me that we should continue this initiative, which is virtual, which doesn't require any expense, anything except our time, and uh, which is such a good initiative where our students connect with our alumni. So uh, one individual is Ankit Malhotra. He had just graduated his LLB from Jindal, and he was he is. Uh, the actually the Felix scholar of this year from India at School of Oriental and African Studies, SOAS in University of London. So he is pursuing an LM in international law and a full scholarship in SOAS. And the second individual was of course our Vice Chancellor, Professor Rajkumar. One day when we were traveling together, he told me, Anand, what happened to your colloquium? You used to do it often and suddenly it has stopped. And I told him, sir, I will resume this. So uh, this, this is also an occasion to, and Ankit actually sent me at least five messages on WhatsApp that, sir, please don't stop this. It's such a good initiative. I am ready to help you out. And uh, Ankit Malhotra is one of the persons who pursued with me. Even before going to London, he told me that, sir, you should resume uh, Younger Scholars Colloquium. So I'm very happy that uh, we are all here together from different parts of the country, different parts of the world, and uh, our students, alumni, even faculty members, uh, parents, and general public, those who are not from uh, Jindal Global Law School or Jindal Global University fraternity, they also watch it, enjoy it, and in a way, get inspired from the journey of our uh, students. So I'm very happy personally that we are able to start the first episode. The next one will certainly follow and uh, we are going to make it a fortnightly event. So every second week there will be a JGLS Young Scholars Colloquium. The panelists are necessarily graduates from JGLS and students of JGLS. So this will continue and now over to you Prerna. Thank you so much, sir. That was a very kind introduction. Um, I'm going to begin from there, actually. Um, I was, I am a first-generation lawyer. Nobody in my family has gone to study at a college level and uh, have a job outside the business. So in that way, Jindal was a whole new experience for me in ways where it taught me how to be and think. I learned uh, within classrooms as much as I learned outside of it. Uh, both Yashas and Sitambar, who spoke before me, were very right in saying that the opportunities that you receive from Jindal are unparalleled. And I have had the privilege to gain access to all of this. Um, so throughout my law college, I have uh, 
had a finger in almost all the different pies that Jindal could offer. Um, if I was into human rights, then I could take a course by a painter Bakshi sir. Um, I got to know about internships at various different litigation offices and um, the different offices that Jindal were always more than happy to help me out with my application. Um, and so, so that way, all my internships have been varied. I've had the opportunity to intern with um, policy centers, leading litigation uh, advocates, uh, law firms. And because of that, throughout my five years, I have had the privilege of experiencing almost all the different kinds of walks of life that I could have had. Um, and then sadly, the pandemic hit. And for a good one year, uh, we were accessing the world through our computer. And uh, that sort of stopped progress. So when you think of future, you want to think of progress. But when you're stuck at home, there's very little room for you to think of future. Um, so when we were stuck at home, what really uh, got, stayed with me was I didn't want to stop being a student. And because of that, me and another fellow, Alev, we started um, a podcast and a YouTube video series called The Unredacted Project. And through this, we would talk about the various issues with law and approach it through an interdisciplinary lens. And for all of these podcasts or episodes, we would approach all the different Jindal professors and students uh, who we've learned so much from throughout the five years. And we still continue that today. And all those professors uh, still remain a mentor and uh, they've, they still guide me through life. And that is something I hold really special um, in my heart. And to any student that's uh, in the same shoes as me as uh, when I started out law school, it can get very overwhelming because you don't know what to choose, whether you should start doing moot courts, whether you should go into fest. Um, whether you should take more student uh, initiative and start your own project. The thing with Jindal is you can do all of it. Um, you can, like I started a prison project and I had, uh, I, I could go to the Haryana prison and do a study on them. Um, I, I was, I liked event organizing. So I got to aid with the Bisa Mill test. So in, in that way, Jindal just gives you an opportunity to try out every single thing. And then you know what to choose after you've had that experience. And that is honestly, it, it's so important, um, especially for somebody like me uh, who wants to try everything. And it gave me an opportunity to reinvent myself every semester, every year. Even I got a chance to go on exchange. And that four months of my life is something I will never forget. And again, that's an opportunity that Jindal has given me. I, I went to Mazdaq University in Bruno. And uh, because of that, I was able to learn how the law systems of the world function. And, um, and, and honestly, that has shaped the lawyer that I am today. And since then, I have worked with a major fintech company, Bajaj Finso. Um, I have so I've been a part of an in-house legal team uh, for almost an entire year where I've learned how the space functions, how regulations work, how contract management and then negotiation work. Uh, after this, I've also dabbled with uh, being a freelance attorney for online creatives like blockchain artists, NFT artists. And now I have finally chosen to enter the field of sports law and I'm working with Fox Mandel. Uh, I mention all of this because I believe that when you want to look at your career, I do not want to be stuck. I do not want to be repeating um, the same old traditional patterns. And the thing is with Jindal, that it teaches you that that's possible. Um, if I am interested in something, I could reach out to any professor in Jindal and they would be more than happy to have a chat with me, to give me the resources that I would need to know more about this field of law. And that is why I have thoroughly enjoyed even my two years of uh, being an alum after Jindal because I've still been able to have all of these different experiences. And now with doing sports law, again, I'm working on sectors like e-gaming, which is new and upcoming. And all of this helps me to become a lawyer that remains, um, you know, uh, adept with technology, that, that remains 
somebody who can keep reinventing the wheel because um i know how to network i know how to be able to talk to different people i know how to research and draft it all of these experiences would not have been possible without jindal and uh, so thank you so much for having me and for um anand nisha sir for still remembering me and my achievements and continuing to keep tab on all of us uh, <laughs> even now so thank you so much for having me tumhara video kaam nahi kar raha Thank you so much, Prerna. That was, uh, I mean, to say the least, it was enlightening for everybody. I believe every student that is listening to you currently from JGU and even from other law schools, I'm, uh, I believe, should at least take one lesson from your playbook. Even if they do that, I think their law school life ahead of the law school is is sorted. And uh, we've had some really really good uh, advice coming in from Pitambur, Yashas, and Prerna. Now we move on to Archana. So, uh, Archana, you're practicing you're practicing in the Supreme Court, correct? Yes, yes. I am currently practicing in the Supreme Court and Delhi High Court and other tribunals and forums in Delhi and uh, neighboring areas. Mm -hmm. So, uh, with me, it's a very. Uh, for me, I would say I start uh, when uh, Patamba went to law school. That was I. That time, I did not see myself ever going to law school. I concentrate my uh, area remained in statistics, economics, and maths, which is and what I did my BA from Punjab University in. But as fate would have would have it, I entered Jinder Global Law School, and I mean, I I would say that you know th that is one decision that I still uh, I'm very grateful for, and I'm I was able to make such a decision. because jinder global law school itself like you know opened my eyes as our prerna said right they, it it opened my eyes to so many things it opened my mind to so many ideas discussions because there's so much happening on the campus itself that you have the opportunity and the privilege to be taught by one of the best professors in the, in your areas right like for example i was taught by professor gudmundur erickson in law of the sea right a uh, a uh, uh, one subject which i do not think any law school even caters to right and i mean it's a privilege itself to have been taught by someone like him or for example being taught tax by uh, professor quatra or uh, being taught by professor severin or mcgill uh, who basically uh, i associated with her for my first year of law school and uh, she really taught me a lot of things about feminism about you know how there is so much of disparity when it comes to judgment writing and uh, in uh, currently as well right uh, so she opened my eyes to a lot of things happening in the world with respect to specifically specifically with respect to women and then uh, obviously i had the opportunity to be taught by uh, mr ritin rai who was who was a senior advocate he took an elective for on regulators and regulatory tribunals so that in fact really opened my uh, uh, areas of interest to uh, something completely different to what i came in jindal with so when i joined jindal i really was interested in criminal law so i went my interest basically went from being uh, being a, a criminal psychologist to a taxation lawyer then to a uh, a, a civil law was never in my uh, a uh, vast imagination right it was always criminal law or taxation or probably be like you know i wanted to uh go in law of the sea as a er uh, area of interest as well but then uh i was the last batch which had a uh, farewell i mean 2019 i graduated in 2019 and immediately 2020 the covid hit and everything was shut down and i remember a lot of my juniors were who were in law school you know they they kept on like they were really distressed about the fact that they are missing out on a lot of opportunities and how uh, their uh, studies are being impacted or like you know how they they do not have those uh, those opportunities which they would have had had they been on campus because jindal in itself as i come i keep on saying and even you know uh, if anyone comes to me if, uh, where should they send their kid and i always tell them jindal for one of the reasons that jindal the amount of opportunities that jindal has i do not think so any other law school does for in jindal you can go do something something like moot court to arbitration to you know you can have uh, to even uh, um, to uh, there's a dance society there's 
so much to do in general it's amazing like you know it caters to each and every individual's every need whatever interest in whatever you your you have i did not have the luxury of uh having five years to think uh, of my trajectory as to where my career would go right i was uh, as a three year law school uh, llb student it was i was completely put into law subjects and that is how it I, it was 3 years right 3 years is too less of a time to think about what you want to do in life um but i think with general it it opened my myself i opened myself to so many different areas that i could explore through electives through you know discussion with other students through in varied internships that the the placement cell offers I, I there was I mean I can I mean like you know it's very it's in, uh, impossible for me to explain that you know how much opportunity general offers, but it I will always say that it depends on an individual at how much how many of these opportunities can you actually make use of right if you are someone who really likes editing or reviewing then there's JGLR as well which is an, an amazing opportunity to be a part of which I was lucky enough to be there. Uh, in one of the first uh, editions of JGLR, uh, I in fact had a, a privilege to edit one of my, uh, Professor Pender Bakshi's article, and we in fact uh, during my time uh, we in fact published uh, an anniversary issue as well for, on behalf on uh, uh, for Mr. Upen, uh, Professor Pender Bakshi. So that in itself, like you know, that those the little uh, opportunities, little uh, memories, right? That makes Jindal so special for me, and I will always be thankful for Jindal and the opportunities it gave me. That it made me this confident in life, right? Uh, in 2021, I started a fashion law boutique firm called Mayat Advisors, wherein I advise uh, models, photographers, and fashion designers, mostly catering to the fashion industry in itself. And uh, I'm also, um, at this point of time, associated with Mr. Siddharth Patra, advocate on record Supreme Court. Uh, so he himself, like, you know, being associated with an advocate on record provides me so much opportunities to be able to go argue to be able to go be there in Supreme Court, be in High Court, anywhere, right? There are so many different areas uh, of uh, uh, areas of law that I get to uh, practice and get to learn about on a, on a daily basis. There's defamation law that I worked on, there's IPR, there's land acquisition matters that I do. And this, this, uh, this uh, I did one year with a tax. I did, I was a taxation lawyer for a year, wherein I worked with a CA firm in Bangalore itself, which gave me a lot of insight into how international tax works. So all these areas, all these different experiences, have really made me who I am today. Be it in terms of being a lawyer, being an alumni of Jindal, being just an individual. And Jindal has a lot to do and has really shaped my future, I would say. So I would always be thankful for Jindal and the faculty and like, you know, my peers, my seniors, all the alumni, because even after leaving Jindal, the alumni network is so strong. And I have not seen an alumni network who is so supportive, especially in the litigation sector. Any query you have in Delhi, anywhere in like, you know, alumni, Jindal alumni is always ready to help. And that has, especially for freshers who are entering law, uh, the field or litigation, it is uh, extremely helpful and it, you know, makes you more comfortable in an area which is, which can be as scary as possible. So, I mean, Jindal has really, uh, I mean, I will... If you would have asked me uh, six years back when I came to Jindal in 2018, that uh, 20, uh, 20 when, uh, when Pitamba joined in 2016, when I came to visit, um, I would not think that law would be something I would be so passionate about and I would be so, uh, I would be in love with law. So I would like to thank Jindal uh, University and uh, Professor Mishra as always. I've been uh, I met him in 2016. I met him again when I joined in 20, uh, 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 when I joined Jindal as well. So, I mean, it's a fantastic uh, opportunity, I would say, to be in Jindal. 
so wonderful archana is such a pleasure you know seeing you and uh, because i remember you as a young kid when you came for the first time yes sir uh, i must tell all of you that uh, it's such a uh, satisfying experience for us that uh, i am there in sonipat for 11 years and our vice chancellor came from hong kong uh, leaving his uh, tenured teaching position in city university hong kong to establish op jindal global university and jindal global law school generally nobody comes from hong kong to sonipat and today we have at least i will say 100 plus professors who have come from various countries people have joined uh, from boston from london from singapore even from iceland and bulgaria and new zealand and australia and all over so what uh, we have been successful in making in a remote almost non descript place called sonipat it's like we are having our own uh, i mean education city it's a, it's our own small boston it's our own a small uh, i will say and, and you can see now there are so many universities around jindal was the first private university of a state of haryana now we have actually moved on we have become institution of eminence and we are directly under ministry of education uh, there are only 20 universities which are declared to be institution of eminence and our law school where you all studied and which was never in any rankings till 2019 when most of you uh, were uh, graduating or i mean it was nowhere in 2020 for the first time two indian law school broke into qs world university rankings out of top 300 in the world and it was jindal global law school and national law school of india university bangalore we were placed 101 to 150 and unless bangalore was placed 151 to 200 today we have rose to rank 70 in the world many law schools in the us in uk in canada in australia in other parts of the world are below us when it comes to the subject law and the law school rankings so in 13 years of time i have been there for 11 years you can understand how satisfying this experience could be and today uh 2022 batch 70 of our graduates have joined world top institutions around the world so they have joined stanford they have joined uc berkeley they have joined uh, nyu columbia they have joined anyway singapore they have joined almost every top institution in the uk in university college london i think there were six of our graduates joined this year in there are only 100 or a little more seats in uh, oxford and cambridge every year our graduates secure admission in oxford and cambridge every year they are securing uh, you know uh, uh, admission in london school of economics in king's college london in uh, university of sydney in melbourne in monash around the world in bucerius law school in germany and what is happening now a lot of our graduates are making international careers they are actually uh, working and practicing in new york in london in uh, i mean in germany i couldn't believe one of our graduate is working for a, a superstore chain uh, as a counsel as a legal in the their legal department after graduating from jindal and doing a masters from bucerius law school in germany and then a lot of them are becoming members of the bar in ontario in canada in uk in uh, australia in both sydney bar and melbourne bar uh, one girl student i remember who has qualified and become became a member of the bar in both australia and new zealand i don't know whether she has taken indian bar membership or not but uh, she is already on the way to you know becoming a good lawyer in australia so uh, the law school is indeed it has progressed really well and uh, our alumni and students have a great role to play in this because we have started with a lot of skepticism a lot of negativity a lot of ideas like uh, uh, i mean jgls is a school for rich kids for you know and i have given admission to students from extremely humble family backgrounds those who 
could somehow afford the fee or after a scholarship they could manage to study at jindal uh, one of our graduate who is, who is right now in oxford university and teaching in oxford university in pembroke college a llb graduate i remember when he came for admission he had ranked 16 out of 16000 student in delhi university llb entrance and the only thing he told me that i can't afford jindal and we were able to provide him almost 100% tuition fee scholarship and he could uh, you know study at jindal got in lakhs scholarship on a full scholarship he went to oxford university for llm for bcl after bcl again got a scholarship and uh, difil admission he is pursuing difil and last year uh, he has started teaching in pembro college in oxford university campus so i mean amazing individuals who have uh, actually uh, 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 discovered themselves in the campus of jgls and jgu and now other schools are also shaping up really well our business school is growing in a big way our international affairs school has made its own mark the liberal arts school is fantastic even the journalism school the public policy school is one of its kind uh, the i mean on a morning walk recently i had visited uh, the jindal school of art and architecture and you won't believe it's a small mini campus within the campus uh, within jgu itself it's a small mini campus just outside you know next to the boys hostel sh1 sh2 and such a beautiful place my feeling was the art school or architecture school should be like this and it has a bright future so most of the institutions within it's not just the law school every school is coming up really well the school of psychology and counseling has become a success story we were so skeptical in thinking whether students will come to study psychology honors at jindal or not and you won't believe in the very first year 150 students from top schools in the country around the country joined psychology honors program and now in second year i think i heard it's more than 200 students who have joined ba psychology now we have a masters degree in psychology we have uh, applied psychology we are even going to start few programs in collaboration with the rehabilitation council of india uh, at our psychology school so the university is doing really great but what they say the alumni are our deferred dividend and whatever you do in your professional life in your work spaces that all impacts us so it's important for our alumni also to always think that whatever you are doing you have to give your best we started with a skepticism and negativity now uh, whenever i meet some law firm partner or maybe a judge of a high court or uh, a senior advocate of the court or even senior professors of various uh, institutions 90% 95% cases i hear only praises and you know good words and uh, appreciation for the hard work of our student the way they conduct themselves while doing internship or while in jobs or being a junior advocate or uh, even i mean some of them are now have now become partners in law firms so uh, i i think this uh, uh, movement this uh, celebration will continue and uh, uh, i will like to invite one by one pitambar to start with for your uh, we have another 10 minutes to go so two minutes everyone please share your uh, exp- i mean uh, a parting remark for the audience for uh, mm-hmm. uh, those who like this colloquium a lot of them from the jgu community only so over to you pitambar thank you so much professor uh, i would just say uh, see uh, it's your own journey and uh, you will eventually figure it out and uh, there's not going to be a benchmark uh, set by anyone else but yourself so just focus on that and uh, you know keep going ahead in your area of choice or your field of choice uh, and uh, trust me you know i've seen my batchmates my juniors uh, who started uh, you know worked really hard to be where they are at and uh, you know i would just uh, give a small shout out to sandeep uh balotia who was my junior and uh, aditya marwa who was my batchmate uh so these are the examples right that uh, i feel that you know once you put your head to something and you start uh, creating uh, a base for yourself 
with that hard work i think you can achieve anything so again my final message to everyone as well was my initial message as well that if you are uh, worried about the transition from the law school to the professional life i would say that take it easy uh, prepare yourself have an idea try it try, try everything out at university and then take a call and even if you feel that even after that you are confused uh, just go with the flow at that point of time and you will eventually figure out so don't worry don't uh, you know take so much pressure on yourself and uh, take it easy you will eventually figure it out yourself thank you so much professor and uh, thanks to all the panelists as well wonderful pitambar so uh, over to you prerna your uh, remarks yeah yeah uh, my message to anybody transitioning from the law school uh, to a career is don't be afraid to change your path don't be afraid to take a risk and take a gamble and uh, try to do something new and reinvent the system um yes let your past experiences become a road map for who you want to become and uh, don't be limited by the choices that you have in front of you you always um, you capable of inventing these choices for yourself and there is no set path in life um and ever in doubt there is always your general alumni which is ever ready ever ready to help you so um yeah all the best and uh, i i hope you find your path thank you wonderful so archana please yes so uh, i just want to say to anyone who is transitioning i would say uh, take it easy right because i mean because uh, what i have realized is that there may be an area where you think okay i want to work in this area but once you start working in that uh, same area you might realize that this is not for you right so as prerna said be ready for changes it's okay to change your career path is path is okay for you to not be in the same area where you think thought you excelled once upon a time and it's and it is extremely important for you to be open minded for you to be open to any and every opportunity that you get especially in litigation uh, be open be uh, i mean you need uh, be confident as well in whatever you do um uh, and always like you know always ask questions always whenever in doubt your uh, we are here anyone your seniors will be there always ask questions always learn always be ready to learn that is all my uh, 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 any to uh, uh, suggestion to anyone who's transitioning always be ready to learn always be open minded and do not restrict yourself to you know just uh, one area you can always uh, you never know where life will take you eventually thank you so what archana is saying uh, you know most of us are on linkedin and one day i used to visit her profile and i realized she has 24 work experiences <laughs> and there is diverse from women rights and human rights to taxation and from constitutional law cases handling constitutional law matters to something pure corporate or uh, you know something like a sports and fashion and so i was amazed the way and and your background is economics mathematics and statistics yes. in punjab university chandigarh uh i i i i know you all come from i mean i could see you studied in lawrence school sanawar and also in vivek high school i think in chandigarh okay. and few other because your records all come to admissions whenever you are admitted we receive everything yeah. though the admission is based on lsat india test score or entrance exam score but the that uh, students from around the country and uh, particularly i was looking at yashas uh, germany is not his only uh, exchange it's the first uh, earlier he has spent time in nottingham trent university in the uk and uh, uh, you also come from a very popular school in chennai uh, kumarans right the kumarans children home 
Uh, I think that's Prerna Professor. I come from this place called Padma Sheshadri, PSB. Uh, Padma Sheshadri School. I have been to a school. It's an amazing school. Yeah, Kumaran says Prerna has studied there in Bangalore. So I could see uh, how JGLS uh, uh, as an institution has uh, attracted students from around. You know, I will share one of my personal experience. One of my classmates of childhood was teaching geography in Dhirubhai Ambani International School in Mumbai. And I had visited Mumbai in 2012, 10 years back. And I told him that I want to visit your school and organize a meeting with your uh, school counselor and you know principal if possible. And he was the geography PGT teaching for quite some time there. Uh, now he has moved to a foreign country but taught in uh, Dhirubhai Ambani for a long time. He told me that, Anand, uh, you are my friend. You are always welcome. Come to the school, spend time with me. But please understand, the students from this particular school, 100% of the class goes abroad. And uh, the admission deans of Harvard, Yale, Columbia, Cambridge, Oxford, they all come and spend time and recruit students from campus. And none of the student is interested in any Indian university. So why will you waste your time? And I told him that uh, you are not uh, aware about JGLS. And that time JGLS was only three year old law school. And we were nowhere in rankings or anything. Nobody knew us. But I told him that, uh, let me come and meet you. And our vice chancellor was traveling to Bombay. And I told him that you should organize a lecture for him. Five graduates from Dhirubhai Ambani International School joined next year. And from that year onwards, every year, if I mean, there is no batch at JGLS where students from that particular school have not joined. So be it Woodstock, be it the Dhuni School, be it uh, you know, uh, uh, any top school in this country. At the same time, students come from Kendriya Vidyalayas, students come from uh, DAV schools, even students I have admitted from government school uh, of Haryana or other states. I have admitted students coming from uh, even extremely humble educational background. And some of them even joined our language classes to upgrade their skills, to be able to cope up with, you know, the teaching and curriculum and uh, life in Jindal Global Law School. And many of them have excelled in life. So I believe the purpose of university is transformation. A university must be a transformational place. Uh, a, a student who enters into the portal as a young 17, 18 year old or 20 year old person. And when he or she graduates, it's a new individual, it's a new person, it's a new learned professional who graduates from the portal of the campus. And we have been uh, at this partly successful in doing that and I'm very happy about that. So Yashas, you are the last one to give your parting, you are the student also. And thank you, Aditya, for uh, you know anchoring this, organizing this, and everyone for giving your time. I think our time is up, but two minutes to Yashas, and we will close the first uh, uh, first JGLS Younger Scholars Colloquium of the second season this year. Over to Yashas. Thank you so much, Professor. Uh, as somebody who does not have the retrospective insight that the other three panelists have. I'm also quite anxious as everybody else who's watching this about what is going to happen in the next year or like two years. But one thing that is something that I would definitely recommend doing is if we, if we are not able to take risks being at Jindal after getting so much exposure and having so much choices, we probably might not be equipped to take risks anywhere. So I think this is a place which allows you to take risks and which everybody has emphasized. But, and I think just taking risks and being sure of what choices you want to have and being flexible in those choices, uh, I think is quite important to me. And hopefully seeing all the other three, given that all of them have absolutely excellent and illustrious careers ahead, 
uh, gives me a lot of confidence both being on the panel and recommending uh, taking this as well. So thank you everyone and have a great evening ahead. Thank you. Uh, what a pleasure, what a pleasant evening here in Kolkata. I just landed and meeting all of you <laughs> online. I hope I will see you all in Sonipat someday very yeah. soon. Yes, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Aditya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Everyone, have a good evening. Thank you, Aditya. Thank you.